What's up folks, Spencer here with Handlebar Labs slash React Native School. Uh, and this month in React Native School, we're actually covering offline capability in your React Native apps. And I just sent out this email, thought I'd put a video together as well. And that's basically the four levels of offline capability that your mobile app is going to have. And the first one is going to be basically nothing. What's going to happen out of the box? So say you make a fetch request and you're offline, so that request is just going to fail. fail. You catch that error, you don't really do anything with it. Maybe you say, show the user an alert, whatever. There's not really anything there. The second level is going to be you notify the user and you may change the user experience when they go offline. So you could use something like the net info package to detect any changes in network connection and then use that information to go ahead and notify the user what is going on. Can they connect to the internet? Can they not? And maybe you disable a button to make a request or a pull to refetch. Uh, data, it's disabled. And then going up to the third level is going to be caching the data that a user may have captured in the past and then using that data that you've stored on their device to then go ahead and at least show them the last time that they were actually connected to the network. So say you're building a trail map and the user downloaded a map, right? If they're hiking, they may not have a very good internet connection. So you want to make sure that they have access to that. That's kind of what I'm talking about with having that cached data. And that can go and expand into a variety of different things. And then the fourth level, kind of the final level that I thought of, is kind of a fully offline capable application. So let's say somebody works and takes remote, uh, takes water samples in remote places. They need to be able to capture data, input data, and then once they're back online, that data needs to be reconciled on the back end and saved. So there's a lot of complexities there that have to go on. And if there's interaction where multiple people could be writing data to the same document, that's a whole other level. So you can see how it kind of grows exponentially as you want to add more offline capability. So it's important to ask, do you actually want to build this offline capability? Or does it actually make sense to build these really complex uh, offline capabil capabilities in your application because you can see it kind of gets more complex exponentially as you go up these different levels. So with that said, two questions to ask is, what's the typical network connection status of a user? Do they work in an office where they pretty much always have high-speed Wi-Fi? Or are they this person working out in the field with an unstable or non-existent network connection, but they need to do work and then reconcile all that later on? The other side is, does offline even make sense for your app? If you're building a real-time chat app, does it make sense to have an offline experience because you can't chat with someone if you're offline, so why spend a bunch of time uh, actually working on an offline capability in your application? So it's one of those things where you know you ask the question, do I want my work to do I want my app to work offline? And you're like, of course I do. But you can see it gets exponentially more complex as you try to cover more cases uh, for making an app work offline. And then sometimes it just doesn't make sense. So a uh, quick little discussion we had in the React Native School email thread. If you're interested, go ahead and sign up. I'll leave a link to React Native School. You can check out and be sure to subscribe to this channel for some more React Native tutorials and discussions.